Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards and in this video I want to talk about trimmed cards. I never thought I would have to make a video where I just say trimming cards is bad, but here we are. There is a former professional football player named Evan Mathis who posted a video on TikTok recently showing how to trim cards and to basically get away with it is kind of my takeaway from the video and how he does it. And if you are just looking to trim cards for your own personal collection, that's weird, but you do you. Feel free to trim your own cards, cut them in half for all we care. But the video felt a little bit different than that. I'm not accusing Evan of actually trimming and selling cards, but that's the concern of what that video brought to me is that people will learn how he trims cards that might get past authentication at grading companies. He doesn't say that, but that's the vibe that the video gives. And then they might do the same thing and they might scam other people. So in this video, I want to share the consequences of why I think it's bad financially and legally. And on top of that, share my thoughts about trimming in general. So if you're new to the hobby, my goal is to show you why you should not do that. And even though you saw a professional football player do it, you should not do that yourself. So here is the video from Evan Mathis on his TikTok. It's called Vintage Card Trimming 101. So that's not great. And then a few notes. I am not accusing Evan Mathis of selling altered cards. So I want to say that I'm not accusing him of doing that illegally. If he wants to cut his own cards in half, there's nothing wrong with that at all. The thing I thought was kind of scummy was that he showed how he altered cards and then he does like have a link, affiliate link where he can go in and you can buy like literally the paper cutter he uses, which is funny, but I'm only sharing my thoughts on what was posted on TikTok so others do not alter and sell cards because that is where there might be potential fraud issues for those sellers. In my opinion, we should not be teaching others how to trim cards. There's no need for knowing how to trim cards. If you want to cut a card yourself, that's fine, but no need to try to like restore the edges to look like they're from 1950. If you want to trim your own cards, never sell them, go for it. Again, I want to mention that. If you do sell that card though, you need to disclose the alteration or it is potentially fraud. So that's all I want to say, but now I want to jump into the difference in price of these cards. Before I do that, I do want to show authentic altered. What is PSA's definition? This means that while PSA is clarifying that the item is genuine due to the existence of alterations, the item cannot receive a numerical grade. The term altered may mean that the card shows evidence of one or more of the following. Trimming, recoloring, restoration, and or cleaning. Items receiving the authentic altered designation, in our opinion, are genuine with the presence of some type of alteration. So they are saying if you trim the card, it is considered authentic altered. That's the same with PSA, BGS, and SGC. So let's compare these two cards. We have two beautiful 1954 Topps Hank Aaron rookie cards. This one on the left has a little bit of edge wear and it has a little bit of mark on his face. This one on the right is basically perfect besides maybe off center slightly. And you would have no idea that one of these has an issue, but the one on the left is altered and the one on the right is a PSA 8. So why is that a big deal? The authentic altered went for about 1950 on auction. Again, the card is gorgeous, but it's altered. And for that purpose, people in the hobby do not want that card. That's just how it is. If we look at the sale of low grade Hank Aaron rookie cards, we'll see a PSA 1.5 sold for a few hundred dollars more at 2140. And then we'll see that a PSA 3 went for $3,307. And then a PSA 2 went for around 2745. If we actually look at a PSA 1 that looks like it's been beat up, gone through the washing machine a few times, this card itself goes for only $100 less than this beautiful Hank Aaron altered rookie card. So the question is, why would somebody even alter these cards? Why would they attempt that on that card? And the reason for that is money. And the reason I say that is because this PSA 8 Hank Aaron Aaron went for almost $40,000, while again, the PSA 3, that might be a PSA 8, if it was slightly better on center, that card only went for about three to $4,000. I'm not saying Evan did that for that purpose. I wanna point that out. He just made a video on if he wanted to trim a card, that's how he would do it. But regardless, this is the dangers in the sports card hobby. People pay for the grade, whether that's another problem in the hobby, that's up to us to discuss another time. But regardless, a PSA 7 goes for $15,000, a PSA 8 goes for $39,000, and even though this card again looks really similar because of the alteration it is only worth two thousand dollars roughly the same as a psa one so just be aware of that let's look at this beautiful authentic altered 1952 tops jackie robinson it looks significantly better in my opinion in regards to centering than this 1952 tops jackie robinson near mint seven the near mint seven has a little bit better clarity and a little bit less surface wear but they'd have been pretty close grades in my opinion if it wasn't altered let's look at the sale price the seven went for thirty six thousand dollars the authentic altered went for the same price price as a PSA one. So again, there's a huge price difference. And that's why when there's ever money to be made, people will come in and try to do things to make that money, whether it's morally or legally right or not. 
So I do want to point out a few comments that Evan made that I thought were a little bit irresponsible, but that's okay. Target packs. I'm not gonna read everything here, but basically he says, why are you posting a video? And then, you know, never mentioning it to people that it was altered. Evan responds by saying, you just said never mentioned to anyone to the only person who's ever posted a trimming video on the internet. And then target packs asks, is this the only card you've ever trimmed? Evan says, no, it's the 1,369th. Probably not exactly the right number, but he's being sarcastic in a sarcastic way, but saying he's done trimming in the past. At least that's the takeaway from this comment. And then why would you want to interpretation in the sports card hobby by posting this when I learned how the hobby truly worked in 2013 I learned how to participate and made it more fun those who judge me don't bother me and then this one is the part that kind of want to talk about so if you're just collecting them for yourself it's fine if you plan on selling them at any point and don't mention anyone you're a liar I agree that's potentially fraud and could get you in trouble legally if you buy graded cards you probably have plenty of trimmed cards accept it or quit collecting graded cards that's a really big assumption first of all stop promoting insincere and pointless activities that add nothing positive to the hobby. This hobby would barely exist without card doctors. They are one of the most critical parts of the entire ecosystem. I don't believe that last sentence at all. The hobby would probably be way better with people who didn't trim cards and scam people and do shady things that weren't necessary. Again, this is not directed at Evan individually because he did not sell any cards in the video. I'm not saying he did, but other people who do trim cards and they might watch Evan's video and then trim cards. Those people, in my opinion, are scummy. It's a problem in the hobby and I don't think it's good whatsoever. The last comment is, everybody's doing it. It's not a big deal. You have them in your collection. That's a logical fallacy called argumentum ad populum. Just because it might be prevalent does not mean it's okay or it's something you should just accept. If we look at the concept McDonald's advertising here, they said billions and billions served because we serve billions. You should come here as well. And over here, people are scamming each other and stealing from each other and everybody's doing it. So it's just fine. If we look back historically at events that have happened that were generally accepted at the time and now they're not accepted in hindsight, that's because they're probably not morally correct. But if you are trimming and selling cards at best, it's morally corrupt. And at worst, it's, you know, breaking the law and committing fraud. So I just want to say just because it feels like everybody's doing it does not mean you should start trimming and selling cards because you're missing the bandwagon. It means if you're not doing it, you're a good person and not taking advantage of others. So card trimming is bad. You know, like I said, at best, it's morally corrupt, in my opinion. And at worst, it could be fraud. The definition of fraud is wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. And trimming is bad. So be careful. It's out there. It's happening. And He's not wrong that people have been trimming forever, but I wouldn't cheer those. I would try to get rid of those people that are trimming and selling cards. You might be asking yourself, why did you make this video? I made this video because there's people who watch my content who might not know this is happening. And on top of that, they might see that video and say, you know what? I should do that because it's common. Apparently it's not common. I wouldn't recommend not trimming and selling your cards because it's a red line, in my opinion, in the hobby. So other than that, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.